What is up, WatchFam? I am Christian from Theo and Harris. And I am Anthony from London Jewelers. And today, we're gonna go through the three reasons that Grand Seiko is just absolutely exploding. Dials and materials, their attention to the United States market, and their movements. Let's do it. The first thing I want to talk about, you know, before uh, we go through these three reasons, starting off with the dials and materials, is the idea of Japan, mm -hmm. right? Uh, w when I first got into watches, I, I was actually hanging out at, um, at uh, Davidoff a lot with some clients in the city. And uh, one of the big problems that, that some of the Davidoff uh, uh, sales associates saw, w while it's a successful company, was that people did not associate uh, Davidoff, a Swiss company, mm -hmm. with uh, cigars, sure. right? And and on that same token, that people wouldn't associate watches with Japan. Sure. Right? Watches are Swiss. Chocolate mm -hmm. is Swiss. Cigars right. are are uh, Hispanic. You know, it, it was interesting. You know, and then that was six years ago, mm -hmm. and now over the last six years, that has completely changed. Sure. Right? Or or pretty largely. And and I'm, you have a lot to speak to. You know what? I think for the most part, I'd say the biggest hurdle they have, and most people know this, is just associating Grand Seiko with Seiko and thinking it's a different price point. Gotcha. So it's not so much that people don't understand that the Japanese are not well known for watches mm -hmm. as it is that Grand Seiko gets associated with Seiko. Sometime. Right. But maybe not associating that Japan is associated with high end watchmaking. Okay. Which the moment you give this to somebody and put it on their wrist, they get it. Agreed. And it's being seen all over Instagram and all over all these, you know, different communities. And like I said, we're going to go through the three reasons I think that people are starting to get it yeah. now. Uh, and let's start off with the most obvious thing, right? Uh, dials and, and just materials in general. Mm -hmm. And there are a couple of things to talk about here. Uh, you start, please, with, yeah. the, with the Four Seasons, because that's just unbelievable. This is part of the Four Seasons, as you said, uh, a U.S. exclusive. This happens to be the spring version, mm -hmm. um, kind of an off very pale pink dial paying homage to the cherry blossoms of japan by far the most popular uh one of the collection my personal favorite in titanium and just the dial just unbelievable that's insane if you would have told me you know a couple of years ago that a pink watch would be so mm -hmm. hard to get uh i i not that i, I probably wouldn't have believed you right, <laughs> i probably right. wouldn't have believed you right uh, but grand seiko has just absolutely killed it with this you know it's not very saturated mm -hmm. you know it's pink enough and different enough to be desirable but it's not too pink right. where it's off-putting you know it's just this beautiful uh, uh kind of conservative dial it's stunning and then to work with titanium and then get the zeratsu polishing on it right. extremely extremely difficult and again we're talking at a price point of under seven thousand uh, dollars maybe not numbered but super exclusive I have clients all over the world contacting us yeah. to try and get these pieces and it's a piece we currently have right now as of the beginning of January yeah. so and, and we'll talk for a second uh, about you kind of the attention to the US market but, but before we do yes you've got this extremely distinctive dial I really can't think of other brands, I don't think there are other brands that, mm -hmm. are, that are putting this much development, uh, not just in the uh, creation of the dial, but in just kind of the, the, the conception, the conceptualization. Sure. The brands no, aren't doing that, they're not going that far. Um, and you've also have got materials, titanium, and here with the 60th anniversary watch, ceramic. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, uh, we've seen ceramic bezels, obviously on some mm -hmm. other watches now, but this is something totally different, don't you right. think? And you don't often see a ceramic bezel that's non-rotational. Exactly. So right. uh, just a beautiful, subtle detail um, that really brings out the dial as well. And again, it's really about the combination of the Zerasu polishing. Maybe on paper, this looks a bit simple, mm. but as you pick it up and you see the, the really sharp cut angles of the watch, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, I, th I think that traditionally we're used to seeing ceramic replacing aluminum. Mm -hmm. Here, this is replacing what would have been steel. Right. Right. It's, it, it's just kind of being a part of the watch. There's no utility to the ceramic here. It's just absolutely beautiful. Although I suppose the utility would be how resistant it is to scratches. Sure. You know, which is pretty cool. Um, but, and, and the color as well is, is, is stunning, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, we all know blue is kind of the it color in the industry, yeah. but this isn't that obvious. It's a very, very rich, dark blue dial that you get some different uh, variations of it under the light. but. It's just very subtle details that you need to see it in the metal to yeah. really appreciate it. I think a fourth example now of, of you know, in this category of, of, of dials and of materials uh, is, is this watch, uh, a stunning, I guess, brushed 
slate, charcoal, mm -hmm. almost looks like anthracite right. uh, dial. Take a look at that. The pattern there is just stunning. It's beautiful. And they're doing different uh, color variations that you don't see mm -hmm. on other watches, especially in this price point. Yeah. Uh, not to mention uh, the first piece we talked about in this piece, the spring drive movement. So you just get mesmerized by that sweeping seconds hand that's smoother than any other seconds out yeah. there. I, I, we, we did an interview with uh, with a Grand Seiko representative pretty recently, and you know the word, the, the term that he used was uh, uh, automatic watches uh, display the moments between the seconds, right? Mm -hmm. you know, and spring drive is the moments between the moments because it's, right, so, right, it's right, so it's so right, accurate, right, you know, right. it's so tight. Uh, that was a really good quote, and, and he's right. I mean, look at the glide there, right? Mm -hmm. It's just stunning. And you know what? I, I'm a fan of the spring drive movement. But I like the weight of the stainless steel versus the titanium. So this is a, a nice compromise. I think a lot of people that I've noticed that I've been showing these watches to, uh, sometimes you want the weight of the watch, but you want the spring drive movement. This is one of the few pieces they make that have both that I really like. Which actually gives us an opportunity to, to kind of pose a question to you guys. Obviously, there's great value and interest in, in a you know, alternative material like uh, like titanium or like ceramic or it might be, but how do you feel about the weight? Uh, this has mm. become one of the most you know popular and sought after watches under ten thousand uh, dollars, which no one saw coming from Grand right. Seiko. Right. Um, but l l I want to hear your perspective: uh, titanium or steel? Right. That's, that's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, number two. Uh, one of the second reason here why Grand Seiko is absolutely just becoming extraordinarily popular under the ten thousand dollar mark, even above really, uh, is their attention to the United States market. The United States sets trends, there's no doubt. Uh, and in understanding that, Grand Seiko has done a lot, and specifically this Four Seasons collection, uh, specifically uh, and exclusively for the United States, like you said, and, and so have I, have had clients all over the world, from mm -hmm. Australia and, and Dubai to South America, everywhere, saying, hey, could you go buy a Grand Seiko for me and ship it? Right. And I'm like, no, right. <laughs> I, I, I don't need to get involved in that. But the, the mere idea that there's a thirst for these watches mm -hmm. all over the world, uh, and, and the Americans were the ones lucky enough right. to get them, retail, is a huge statement by Grand Seiko. I think we've seen it in the watch industry. Brands do exclusive timepieces for a certain territory yeah. or a city, or whatever it may be. But to offer a collection exclusive to one area is, is pretty remarkable in that each one is very different than anything else out there. It's not just an existing model with maybe a stamp on the back that says USA. Color. No, right, no. right. This is very different, a lot of detail, a beautiful story behind each watch. And I think that's why it's doing so well. And, and the, I mean, think about it. Think about it from a strategy point of view. What did Grand Seiko have to give up to make this decision, right? Mm -hmm. If they release these watches all over the world, I think that they would be equally as desirable. Yeah. People would still want them. Grand Seiko probably would have made millions more dollars mm -hmm. by doing a wide release here. But instead, uh, they sacrificed those millions of dollars yeah. and said, let's treat the Americans really, really well. Right. right? Not, that, not that they don't have equal love for other territories, mm -hmm. but the American market is so big, they really, wanna, they really wanted to, I think, like show like an olive branch. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, Grand has only been in America, it hasn't even been 10 years yet. Right. You know, so I think that this was like a, uh, a sign of goodwill and good mm -hmm. faith you know, uh, uh, breaking into this market heavily. And I think it was genius. It's also becoming, I think, the watch guy's watch. Maybe in the past it might have been JLC or something like that, but this is one of those brands, if someone's coming in and they're familiar with it, yep. you know right away they know watches. I want to just bring one more thing up with this Four Seasons. There's no bezel here, and I always forget to mention that. Mm -hmm. That is so cool. Right, I mean, right. Look, look, it's just the crystal goes right into the case. Mm -hmm. Isn't that wild? It's amazing. It's, uh, you know what, I think of the four, it's definitely my favorite. Uh, and it's it's the hardest to come by. I don't know why we currently still have it, but we do. Um, second, I really like the summer as well, but this one, you need to see it in person. If you guys want to buy the watch, I guess we'll just shoot Anthony an email. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it might be gone by then. Yeah, it but, could be, uh, it could be. It depends uh, when it comes out. And then number three here is really what they're, they pride themselves most on, I mean, maybe I would go so far as to say, is, is their movements. Before Zeratsu, before America, before the Four Seasons, uh, Grand Seiko was dedicated to supreme accuracy, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the Grand Seiko standard was a standard that was invented specifically to beat 
the Swiss standard. Right, right. right. Like, like, it wasn't random numbers. Right. They, they undercut COSC just by a hair, mm -hmm. just to say we are tighter and we are, you know, better. For sure. Um, more of a bragging right than it is a practical function. Mm -hmm. um, but watch geeks, like hardcore people, that's why you're buying stuff. That's why yeah. you're buying watches in general. Uh, there are history people, mm -hmm. there are movement people, there are dial people. Grand Seiko happens to be appealing to everybody in a right, different way. Right. So here we've got, we have the spring drive and we have the quartz watches. Mm -hmm. uh, they also make a, a hell of a series of automatic movements as well. Right, high beat active. stuff. And exactly. You know right. what? In the early 2000s, it was the big race to do in-house. Everyone was going in-house, making facilities to do so. You know, millions of dollars invested. And Grand Seiko, here they are. They've been doing in-house movements all along, whether it's quartz or, or high beat or automatic or manually wound or spring drive. So they've been doing it for a long time. Yeah. And you, you pair that all up together, that's why they're doing so well in the watch industry right now. Yeah, Ag agreed, agreed. The spring drive is something that I, I never understood right because right? it's so difficult right spring drive is this is a perfect technological middle ground between mechanical and quartz so with the spring drive movement it's actually regulated by a quartz crystal but it's powered by an automatic oscillating weight so it's the perfect combination of old school watch technology and new school watch technology and most people myself included when I was first introduced to this movement I said no 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 I don't I don't want a battery watch just for my preference that's not something I was interested in until I be became more knowledgeable about what it really is. And every time I show it to someone and explain to it, they fall in love. And, and this has probably become their claim to fame, like their technological claim to fame. Easily. Uh, and few brands, and I'm sure you guys can think of them, I mean, have something so uh, unique and proprietary. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the brands that do, right. that's like, something that they cling on to forever, right. rightfully so. Mm -hmm. uh, it's technology that will forever be relevant, at least as far as I can see. Well, you look at watches in general and timekeeping, it's pretty much a technology that's hundreds of years old, and there's really not much change. So they just offered something that's completely different than any other company out there. And that's hard to do for, uh, you know, not many people are doing that, I think, yeah. not many brands. I think about it, I mean, while some of the most famous brands in the world were offering, you know, modular chronographs, mm -hmm. you've got, you know, these guys that were doing, you know, something completely different. Right. Uh, and getting no recognition for it for, right. for years. So right. it, it really is amazing. There's, there's no secret. Uh, Grand Seiko is, is becoming one of the most popular, sought after, you know, talked about uh, brands under $10,000 and really even over 10 grand, but, but specifically mm -hmm. under 10. Uh, people really can't believe what, what they're producing. And uh, I'm glad to see them getting the attention. Me too. I know you are too. Do you get people coming in to look at the Grand Seiko counter? It's, it's pretty close to the front. It is. It's a good location here in Manhasset. Um, you know what? We're definitely getting some good foot traffic with the watch guys and girls of the of the industry. But I, one of the things I love is people that are just getting into watches that know Seiko, but perhaps not Grand Seiko. Yeah and then getting to talk about the brand because I do think this is one of the brands you need to see it in the metal and learn more about it to truly appreciate it. So it, it's fun, but it's definitely gaining traction, especially in this area. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, one more note before we stop. Uh, one of the big themes in Grand Seiko is this uh, juxtaposition between light and dark, you mm -hmm. know? And look from this angle, like the faceted bezel, mm -hmm. how you've got the, basically as white as blue could be and then as black as blue could be. Side right, by right. Side. That's so cool, man. It's, it's, it's really amazing watches. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for having me, man. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad that I could pull out any watches I want and just play them <laughs> for a while. It's, it's, it's literally my favorite thing to do. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to our channel if you love watches uh, and if you uh, have any thoughts on the subject. If you are a Grand Seiko owner or maybe soon to be owner, comment down below with your thoughts, the pieces you own or are considering. I'd love to have a conversation. You guys can find me here at London Jewelers. We'll go ahead and leave my email down below. Uh, if I don't answer you, I will set you up with a salesperson that's very knowledgeable but I do recommend if you're on Long Island, please come in, try on these watches. If not a Grand Seiko, we carry over 30 watch brands here. We'd love to have you. Absolutely right. All right, see you guys soon.